it really just got cold just now like before i've been dealing like it's been 70 degrees and i think that's why it's been taking me so long to release this what i've been drinking in the fall video because like i feel like i just haven't been quite there yet and now I, I i feel like oh yeah it's fall even though it's like end of october people are like it's been fall and i'm like i know please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel i just hit 1700 subscribers thank you guys so much for tuning in it's it's been a wild ride it really has and i've really enjoyed it why is this crooked Hi you guys, I am back. It's Vivian the Psalm next door and today we're gonna be doing my fall wine picks. What I've been drinking this fall and what I plan to keep on drinking. Um, right now, very fall-esque, I'm making some banana bread, or not banana bread, I'm sorry, pumpkin bread. In here we have ginger. I like to put ginger in my pumpkin bread. Clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, and I think that's giving fall vibes and I like my wines to also kind of reflect that. So I've been traveling and working, which is why I haven't been posting that much, but um, I'm trying to get back into it. I'm sorry. I did like this nice two week tri trip to Europe. It was nice to go to like Paris. And I think that, you know, Paris in my time in Cannes, you're gonna see some, some influences there for my fall wine picks. And then I went to Cinque Terre. This is through train, which is uh, the way to do it. Made my way to the Amalfi Coast, but on the way I stopped at Naples, duh, had a pizza. Um, it was delicious. Made my way to Rome. Yeah, overload on pasta and I did some wine shopping. So I wanted to share that with you. All right, I am <laughs> trying to mix this butter in. So the first wine that I had, and this was actually before my trip, was a Riesling from Germany in the Rheingau. 2013 JB Becker uh, Cabinet, which is the ripeness level in the Pradicat. I'll share with you like the, there's like a, pyramid of ripeness people kind of confuse it with sweetness which it kind of goes hand in hand but not necessarily so cabinet is like the less the less ripest one in the pyramid um this was trocken which actually means dry and guys it was if you had a sense that rieslings are all one type you have to have tried this wine it I was so shocked. You can ask my friend Juan. I was just so confused. Like I was just like, this is the driest, like Sahara Desert dry. There was no perceptible sweetness, which I don't think I've ever experienced in a Riesling. It was very light. It was like, like almost weightless. It rocked my roll. The color was beautiful, beautiful yellow. The next would be Cote de Rhone. I went to a couple, they're called Bouillon, and it means broth. And they're kind of just like the everyday working class restaurants in Paris, and they're great. I didn't order a bottle of wine, but you can order crafts. And I got a liter, one liter. So a bottle of wine's 750 liters. For a lot of sommeliers, they love Cote Rhone because it's, it's just very food friendly too. It's like an easy red wine. It's not too tannic. E. Gagal and M. Chapoutier make really great Cote Rhones, and they're pretty affordable too. Just very high quality, um, not too expensive. So those are like probably my like everyday drinking, like go to a restaurant. Oh my God, that one liter, it was 16 euros. 16 euros for one liter of wine. Up next is my favorite region. One of my favorite regions, oh my God. People always ask me that. It's like, what's your favorite region? Ugh, it, it, it's hard, but Loire Valley is definitely one of my favorites. And the next wine um, I had in Cannes is a Sommer Champagne. The producer was Antoine Sanze, and he is one of the, he's an, an amazing producer in the region. Antoine Sanze, he's seven generation. He's an, a pretty young winemaker 
and he's been producing really great wines. It was really, really delicious. It smells like crushed rocks, blackberries. You know, the one thing about Cabernet, so, uh, Cabernet Franc is that it has that black pepperiness to it. So, you know, kind of going back to the spices. Right now, that's what I'm feeling. Some Cabernet Franc. Then, Bandoles, which is a rosé from Provence. So, right, I told you that I went to Con, and the reason why I picked Bandoles is, one, I kind of want to prove that rosés don't have to be only drunk, only had in the summer. You could have rosés all year round. I think Bandoles are actually perfect for fall because they're they're a little spicy. They're not, they have a little more umph to it, even despite their like very pale, peachy, light pink color. They're, they're a powerhouse rosé. They're typically drunk with a French uh, fish stew uh, called boulebase. I guess in the south of France, that is a nice fall, maybe wintry meal. Put pumpkin in here. So we're mixy mix. Mix, mix, mix. Flowers in. I really don't follow the recipe in terms of sugar. I always reduce the amount of sugar. So this pumpkin bread called for two cups. And I was just like, oh, we're just gonna put one cup in. Okay, let me put this in the oven. And then I wanna tell you about my Italian ones. Let me get these sides. This doesn't burn. Okay. Oh my God. Look, I got pumpkin on my sweater. Is it really fall if you don't have a burgundy red. So this is a Sauvignon Le Bon. Pinot Noir for people. And yeah, I think burgundies, red burgundies, come on, you know, you know the drill. I think bone around, like, you know, the different communes in bone are a good place to get value reds. So it was my 30th birthday recently. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. Um, Rheingau, it's typically warmer and more reliable in, in, especially for like Pinot Noirs. So I would also add Pinot Noirs from the Rheingau for fall. But yes, it was my birthday. And for my 30th birthday, I opened my Barolo that I painstakingly brought with me from Piedmont, from Soretto, which is the producer. And it was delicious. It was so, so good. It was in great condition. It was beautiful. It was like at its peak. It was delicious. It was so smooth. The smell of Barolos and, Ar and uh, Barbarescos, it's, it is fall. It is fall to a T, like quintessential dead leaf smell. Like it, it just smells like fall. I can go on and try to like describe it from like why it's like such a visceral experience for me, but it's just, it is, it is it, it is it. This is probably like one of my high-end wines, Barolos are probably for me. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Which is why, you know, now that I finished this, I got a replacement. So while I was in Rome, I went wine shopping, duh, da da da. even though I was kind of afraid like, if it was gonna fit in my bag. So I got a, I was I was tempted to get a Gaia. Gaia is like a very famous Barolo producer, but it, I was like talking to the wine shop owner and it's like, you know, you're really just buying it for the name. And you know, for that same price, you can get a wonderful Domenico uh, clerical Barolo. And I was like, you're probably right. Maybe this will be, I don't know if I can wait that long, but maybe I'll have this for my 40th. 10 years, be patient, be patient, be patient. And then Barbaresco, I also drank this, which I got last year, I believe at Vin Chicago. 
And this was also very, very tasty, very delicious. I think for like this one, it was like, I'll have to look again. I think it was like 40-ish dollars and already like 2012 and I bought it last year. So already like with some decent aging on it, it was very delicious. And so, you know, drank this, need a replacement as I do. And I bought this Barbaresco Rabaha and you know, maybe, maybe in a couple years, I'll pop this one open. Not saying you have to wait that long. Barolas and Barbarescos are getting to a point where you don't need to age them quite so long. The quality has just gone up and it's gotten much warmer in those areas. So uh, uh, they are able to produce wines that don't require as much aging, but I think they just benefit from just, you know, just, sm they just smooth out so nicely. So Barolas, Barbarescos for me for fall, but if, you know, you're not trying to go all the way to that level, get Nebbiolo's uh, Longa Nebbiolo. It's, it's really trendy right now. So sometimes I like don't wanna say, oh, just always go for a Longa Nebbiolo. Typically you can find a pretty good one at like $30. All right, you guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This is what I've been drinking this fall. Um, comment down below if you guys want to hear about my trip and the types of wines that I was drinking, like, like Cinque Terre wines and um, yummy volcanic wines since I was near Mount Vesuvius. Guys, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. This was my fall wines that I have been drinking late, I know, but here nonetheless. And happy fall and cheers. I will catch you guys later.